Grace and peace be upon you, my brothers and my sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a minister disciple of the non Woodhouse. I want to tell you a bit of my testimony. I'm not doing this for no pity or, um, you know, God, feel sorry for me. If you do, I appreciate that. Appreciate your prayers and your concerns. But I'm doing this because I want to see people um, encouraged. I want to see people um, to bring. Are broken free from bondage, from misery, from pain, from torment, from destruction, from being on 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 poisonous paths that is that is holding them in captivity and keeping them from fulfilling their destiny, their purpose in life. For for about a year, for almost almost a year, I was I was I was abused. Um somebody that was very close to me that 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 should have protected me that should have um, been there to help me um, it was increasingly physical um, verbal um, there was knives involved uh, saliva involved uh, fists involved feet involved um, I did what I did what people like me uh, who are born again Christians would do is try to fight for the relationship and I did whatever I did I did I did a lot prayed fasted um, solicited help from friends uh, counseling um, but if somebody doesn't want help if somebody is not wanting to get help if somebody is putting the blame on you not taking ownership of what they've done um, then it's it's irredeemable and how long will, will you would it take until you finally say enough is enough and if I would have stayed in that relationship I'd probably be dead by now I probably have some burn marks I, I got almost got burned multiple times almost by the grace of God then I get burned um, I was wrongfully incarcerated couple of days all my charges are dropped no no evidence was was um was um was uh was confirmed but wasn't it didn't held up pulled up so I, I put myself in the pit and I tell anybody if you're in the pit the longer you stay in the pit the deeper you're gonna go and the longer and harder it is to come out you know and Staying with this person, my ministry was at stake. I'm, I'm on a path to be an ordained pastor. My ministry was at stake. My record was at stake. My health is at stake. The, the, the stress on the organs, the heart, that's at stake. My future was is at risk, being tied down to bondage. I, I, read, of a, I read of a woman that the, the, the church told this lady that she had to stay in the abusive relationship with this person or it would be a sin um, and she stayed with this person and and she, one day she, she decided to leave the person the man shot her in the back of the head she died and if somebody claim to be a Christian and they are physically harming you they're not a Christian and God would does not sanction that relationship some people think God put them together but they put themselves together so and I'm probably to blame because I saw red flags I saw certain things that but I, but I hoped I thought that things would get better um, this person claimed to be a Christian this person claimed this person did things for God in the past and but not anybody who's a Christian or call themselves a Christian truly is a Christian not everybody who's a Christian is compatible with you. And if you see certain things, question it. And if it doesn't get better, run away. The person doesn't realize that they have, they, they have an issue and the person doesn't want to get help. Then you have no business being with the person romantically. You could be a friend. You could be uh, an associate. Um, but... Going deeper, going intimate with that person now, it's gonna it's gonna harm you 
not, not just physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it can help, it can really damage you. There's people out there who are being abused on a consistent basis. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse. There's not just adults, children from friends, from a friend of a family mem a member, a relative being abused. If you've been abused, run! Run away! Do whatever you gotta do to flee. Go to, go to a friend's house, go to a shelter, call the police, do, do something. But don't stay in that environment. It's a toxic environment. And it's negatively impacting you. From what God has called you. You are you are a child of God. No, don't subject yourself to that pain. That anguish. That torment. You are called to do amazing things. Don't let a person stop you from God's best. No. Time to get your self-esteem back. Time to get your joy back. Time to get your power back. Time to get your authority back. You are a child of God. And don't, and don't subject yourself. You're not a punching bag. You should be honored. You should be cherished. You should be protected. Whether you're a man that's being abused, whether you're a woman being abused, whether you're a teenager being abused, doesn't matter what your stage is, is in life. Don't not ever subject yourself to that, to that pain. You have things to do. You have a destiny. You have a purpose to fulfill. Don't let a person keep you in bondage and destroy what God has called you to do. Your health is at stake. Your peace of mind is at stake. It's important that you get away as soon as possible from that person that is hurting you. God doesn't want that for you. Doesn't want that for you at all. A person not a true Christian. And you're not doing no sin if you leave somebody who is hurting you and is threatening your life. You're not committing a sin. Not at all. Because God never put you together. But I'm happy that I, I left. Um, it, it wasn't. It wasn't easy. When you invest in somebody for so long. Uh, emotion is there um, it, it was the hardest thing in my life the hardest struggle in my life to cut ties and to say goodbye um, and there's no romantic um, connection anymore um, it's been a, quite, a, quite a while now um, you know the science is there and it's like how long until you say, say bye time is precious time is a valuable commodity that cannot be replaced how long are you gonna if you see it's not getting better it's getting worse the person does not acknowledge their faults doesn't get help at all listen the person's not gonna stop it's gonna escalate and if, if there's children involved they're gonna be negative impacted they're seeing that they're hearing that Think about them. But it was a very hard decision for me. You know, both mostly attached. But I knew if I if I stayed, it was so obvious the evidence, the signs that my career as a pastor would be in jeopardy. My peace of mind would be at, would be at stake. Um, my longevity, a less a, a shorter lifespan. My 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 record. My doing this video right now wouldn't wouldn't happen, you know. Helping people as much as I can wouldn't happen. I I know I've God gave me a gift for encouragement, for counseling, for for pastoral ministry. I know what what, what I've been called to do. I don't think I'm I'm, I'm a person, abusive person. Stop that. I'm, I'm I'm out. I'm out. God said His word. Don't touch the unclean things. Separate yourself. If anything is, is contaminating your future, you need to separate yourself. Whether it's a person, a situation, a place, don't touch the unclean thing. What is that unclean thing that you keep on exposing yourself to that you know you need to sever yourself from? 
You know what that is. You know, you know, you got, again, you got a conscience. You, you, you don't need a Bible to, 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 to tell you. Bible's great, but you got a conscience that you know. You know. You have, you have sensibilities. You know. I want to, um, I want to read a quick, uh, this one, one verse. Psalm 105, verse 5 says, Saying, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. So God says, don't do my prophets no harm. What is anointing? In ancient biblical times, they it would accompany a, a bath. It was a customary part of the preparation for a feast. It was a way of showing honor to a guest to anoint the head of oil. Sometimes to anoint their feet. And uh, also uh, the thought is to is to appoint to qualify for a special dignity function or privilege so god has anointed us for a, a particular function a particular privilege a particular duty a calling you are called you are anointed to do something spectacular with your life don't let nothing nobody stop that touch not my anointed Every abuse, every abuse, every victim needs to go tell the abuser right now and say that verse. Don't, guys, don't touch. Don't touch his anointed. In, in the pack, pack up your bags and get up out of there. Run. Go the best place that you could possibly go. Hallelujah. I'm calling. I'm calling you guys to get out. Taking this on per personally. You know, the abuse from me got really bad. It was probably a little, a little under a year. Yeah, I, um, and I said, it's time for me to go because, and I, I looked on all the, the research. Uh, most abusers never change. Most abusers, um, they don't take ownership. They blame the other person. Things the other person their fault. Um, both people need to confess their whatever faults they may have brought to the table. Both should be able to say, "Listen, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I apologize. I'll do whatever it takes to to make changes and make the relationship better." And every re relationship has issues, but there's no cause. There's no reason why you should put your hands on anybody. You got no reason to do that. None. How dare you do that? How dare anybody lay their hands on anybody? If that person bought, if, you, if that person irks you that much, leave the person. Go about your business. You're in the business hitting the person. Who you think you are? Why would you do that? You want someone to beat on you? You want somebody to rape you? You want somebody to persecute you? You like that? So why you do that to the other person? Do unto others as how you want them to do unto you. So if, if, if someone is abusing somebody, you should want you should expect the person to abuse you and you should not even complain about it because you did it to the person. Do unto others as as as, as how you would want them to do unto you. So if you abuse if you abuse somebody and they abuse you, don't complain. You 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 started it, you initiated it. Alright? Would you want someone to abuse, so for the abuser out there, you want someone to abuse your child, your mom, your dad? Some, a lot of y'all know. So why are you abusing that person for? Why are you abusing that person that, that you so-called love? It? And these people, they stay in these, these victims, they stay in the relationship thinking things are going to get better. I know quite a bit of people um, throughout, throughout my life, a few who have been, who are stay in these relationships thinking things will get better. Girl, I know, I know this girl that she come, um, I see every now and then, she's, she's got, she got bruises, she got scars. Like, well, why you keep staying? You got some better men out there. You know, he say, I'm sorry, but it, what is he doing? Where's the evidence that he's really changing? Is he going through some kind of program, some therapy program, some counseling program? Is he talking to a pastor, a therapist, or some, some teachers, some mentor? Who, what is he doing? Some saying, I'm sorry, is not enough. Where's, where's the corresponding actions that correlates with that particular um, 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 confession? 
those those words. Where where is the action to substantiate his claim of saying I'm sorry? If there's no evidence, the person's not gonna stop. Not gonna stop. But most of them most of them do not stop. Over ninety, I've heard over over ninety ninety five percent about. It. So statistics show it's not going to stop. And if you stay, what are you missing out on? What are you missing out on? If you stay with that person, you can miss out on a much better person that will rock your world. <laughs> That's going to help you to do incredible things, to love you. Honor you, cherish you, amazing things for the Lord, your career, other a side hustle, a business. Who knows what you can do? Don't let a person stop you. Don't go by your feelings. That, that was my problem. I let my feeling dictate what logic and principle didn't 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 tell me to go towards. When principle and feelings clash, no. Feelings and principles going should go in the same direction. If they're going different directions, the evidence is showing something different. If the principle is showing something different. Go with the principle. Go with logic. Go with facts, not feelings. Feelings are not always reliable. Usually, usually they're not. You want to go based on what the the, the, the facts, the, what is really going on. You are called you are you are called for greatness for for a strong purpose all right so i hope what i said encourage somebody out there um give you some ideas of of staying of making plans to leave to sever yourself from unhealthy soul ties don't get wrapped up. Don't be in a, a bondage to. A lot of people are not physically incarcerated, but they are emotionally, mentally, relationally incarcerated. All right. I don't know. Some of you haven't watched that cartoon called Pokemon, right? There's 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 this uh, there's this move that the Pokemon does called Leech Seed, and they go, oh, the Bulbasaur, Boba, Bulbasaur. <laughs> so the Bulbasaur does this move where the leech, the, the the some kind of vine or or um vine goes over the the, the pokemon and the, the, the pokemon gets constricted like that like that and the, and the pokemon cannot get out of it and slowly slowly um the energy is being sapped out of that pokemon because it's caught up in that in that elite seed in those vines a lot of you is caught up in that elite seed your energy is being sucked out by being in an abusive relationship abusive situation even in your job in your employment if you if you're being harassed in your job you better get out you better leave you better start making plans get up out of there go don't don't allow yourself to be exposed to damaging toxic situations I don't start looking there's so much opportunities out there for better employment People said people made hard decisions to leave a job that, that they were tied to and they found better employment. People made hard decisions to leave relationships and they found a better person. Way better. And they would stay with, with, with the toxic situation, toxic job, toxic boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. They would have they would have been they would have not went to the um, the other person and and have peace of mind and freedom. You know. And um Prosperity, abundance, and fulfillment. All right? Not everything caused for you to leave a relationship, but abuse? Hmm. This, yeah, what I'm saying is a pretty sensitive topic with even a lot of Christians. But, but if I say any any so called loving mom, loving dad can look at their child, imagine walking to a house. Outside, outside your, your, your son, daughter's house Or your parents' house you Go to the window and, and you see that person again Boom, boom, boom You would say stay with that person? <laughs> nah A knife 
Ooh, a knife. You see a shoo. You stay with that person? <laughs> nah. Don't. God give, God's giving you common sense. Common sense. The Bible says if the unbeliever wants to depart, let him depart. God has not called you to bondage. Don't be in bondage anymore. Unbelie unbeliever is not is somebody who and that's not only about believing and about God intellectually, it's about believe the action. And when someone will abuse somebody, they have separated themselves from that person spiritually, emotionally. That person has separated themselves from that person. I think I think the Greek the, the, the Greek word is think of chorizo about separation. It's not just about leaving um, the person physically. Somebody hurts you like that, abuse, that person has spiritually, mentally, emotionally separated themselves from you. That person is an unbeliever. That person has, has severed the, the vow, whether it's a marriage or relationship. It is severed. It's, it's, it's an internal separation, not just about physical um, separation only. That person is not a true Christian. Not at all. And if you're not a Christian, if you're being, if you're in a abusive relationship, get out. Believer or non-believer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at this. Yes. Summarize once again. I was hit back of the head. Maybe two or three times. Not that much. I was, I was kicked. Often, I was spit upon. I had a knife pointing at my face. I, I, my, I, I, this person spit in my food. This person damaged my, almost damaged my property multiple times on my, my phone. Right? And this person falsely accused me. Got me arrested. First time ever. First and last. Never. Hmm. Over, over some disagreements. Me, see, me and my parents have disagreed on different things. I, I love my parents. But never have my parents ever abused me. And, and right now, me and my parents are cool. Real cool. By God's grace, it will, it will stay that way. Hmm. People disagree a lot. But you're not going to... Especially on, on, like, on a job. If, if somebody... Uh, that you don't. That's, that's not how you solve problems by hitting somebody. You disagree on something, okay? You get you're, you're upset, okay? We'll we'll find we find a way. We'll we'll sleep on it. We'll pray about it. We'll get some help. We'll get some. We'll, we'll read up on it. But why are we why are we fighting now? Why are we? I didn't. You not. You didn't get into a relationship to for a sparring partner for for a boxing match or wrestling match. No. You started that relationship for compatibility, for love, for respect, to church each other, to have fun together. Fun! Woo! Fun! You should be in a fun relationship. <laughs> but a lot of people, it's not fun anymore. It's stressing, it's boring. It's toxic and it's draining. Get out. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray, Lord, that that abused person that may be listening right now could leave and never go back. I pray that person will get the courage, determination, the resiliency to say, no, I will not stay in this situation no longer. I'm a woman, man of God, of strength, passion, confidence. I got things to do, things to accomplish. I got a destiny to fulfill. I got one person influence and character. Strong people don't explore themselves in such toxic situations. They learn to leave when it's not in their best benefit. It's going to hurt them long term. Give that person peace of mind today, God. Give that person comfort today, Lord. Give that person strength, oh God, to leave 
and never and never go back. Necessary endings. Two books by Henry Cloud. Never go back and necessary endings. A Christian psychologist. Thank you, Laura. Read those books recently, and what a blessing. There's people who need to make those endings right now and never go back. Give those person peace of mind. Give the person power, Lord. And for those who are who are abusers, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they may humble themselves and get help. There's a, there is a few out there that really do acknowledge that, that, that they have been abusive and that they do get help and they do get healed. I pray, Lord, that they will get help and acknowledge their own fault in the matter. But I'm praying, Lord, that those, those children who are being abused, the, the mothers, the fathers, oh, man, the relatives who are being abused, Lord, help them to find a way to be released from the toxic situations. Praying for a breakthrough, deliverance, in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace be upon you, my brothers, my sisters. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. This is a minister, Denon Woodhouse, at your service, trying to be as effective as possible. Hope I uh, really hope help, help some people out and will do it as much as I can to, to, to my last breath. Hallelujah. Uh, grace and peace be upon you and your families. In Jesus' name, I love you. I love you. I'm not praying for you. Take charge over your life. Grace and peace be upon you. Amen.